Howdy folks, so a quick video for you today. Um, this is the second time I've had to film this uh, because the original footage was uh, super dark and you couldn't see anything. So if it looks like things are kind of far along, it's because they are. Uh, so sorry about that. But anyway, I recently picked up this uh, power strip from a thrift store because uh, you can never have too many of these things. And I liked it because it had a circuit breaker in it. It had a switch, which didn't have a neon light in it because of course those things always eventually go flickery and fail. So just not having one's nice. It's got nice mounting points. Anyway. You know, decent quality. It's built in Canada in the 80s. Nice, uh, nice power bar. But, uh, you know, I tested it. It works fine. And uh, when I got home, I realized it rattled a little bit. And so I thought, okay, maybe there's some broken plastic in it. So I decided to open it up. Um, and you probably should open, um, I say, probably most of the used electronics you buy at a thrift store because you really don't know what's past history. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll see... Why, why that's applicable in just a few moments. Um, but I, I thought, you know, plastic was, was broken, and, and uh, these uh, Noma products from this era, they're all this weird gray color. You can remove, you can open them. Um, they don't have any, um, any fasteners in them. Um, they're, they're not welded, they're just friction fit, and you need a really strong, like a metal spudger or a screwdriver, uh, but you can open them. And so I opened it, and what I discovered was that this thing had been through, um, well, it's a surge protector, so it's been through a surge. Um, so uh, this is uh, pretty much certainly lightning damage um, when you look at the circuitry, uh, but this is uh, what it looks like after I cleaned it. Um, and uh, this stuff, even though it's soot, it's carbon, it doesn't rub off, uh, and that's because this was uh, superheated in an arc flash, and it's actually melted itself into the plastic, so this doesn't come off. Um, so this is after I, I, I cleaned it. Um, so I, I did that, unfortunately, um, after I took the last uh, video clip of this. Uh, but this is fine. Um, I, I do plan on reusing this, by the way. I know a lot of people would throw it out after this, uh, and that's perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. Um, but really, the only case where the, the carbon matters is around the, uh, the channels for the bus bars, and that I've cleaned out, so there's no carbon tracking issues. Uh, this is all just uh, superficial. So the actual circuitry in here and this is the this is the fun bit. Uh, so you can see we've got a, a, a breaker and our switch. The neutral goes straight to one of the bus bars, or just uh, brass bars, um, and the hot uh, goes through these. And then between line and neutral, there is a mov because that is the surge protection. And uh, I, I hope that this uh, comes across because of course it's all black. But this is what's left of the mov, um, and this is of course what blew out. And uh, this is, when I say what's left of the mauve, and again, I hope that the lighting works out here, this, uh, this is an empty, an empty case. Um, you can see that there's what's left of a lead here, and there's a, uh, just an indent where the lead uh, would go. And what was rattling around inside was not actually the, um, was not actually a piece of plastic, it was actually what's left of the mauve. Um, so I found two pieces, uh, well actually, I found five pieces. Um, I managed to put it back together. So this piece here is actually the cover that goes on the other side of the mauve. Um, so this would be the other, basically just it's the plastic shell of the mauve. You can see um, there's a little uh, groove where the electrode would be, and the electrode just, it's gone, so I think it's just vaporized. Um, so that would be the other cover. And then this, uh, these four pieces here, make up uh, the actual um, varistor material uh, on the inside. So this is the actual mauve material itself. Um, so I kind of put that back together as a puzzle. So that's what's left of it. Um, so that's why I, I think this was a pretty high energy event. So I'm going to say this was, this was lighting. And so um, the, going back to why I think you should open things you get um, used, um, especially in the, the case of a power bar, is you should open it because this thing worked fine. Um, you know, you plugged it in, you flipped the switch and everything, and it, it did everything expect, you expected it to do. Um, but you would never know that this was what was on the inside. There was no markings on the outside. Um, and I suspect that this was probably in, in use after a surge uh, because there was no carbon on the outside. You can actually see this lip here. Um, the carbon made it just over this lip. And so you couldn't see anything uh, when this was, you know, all together. And, uh, you know, it's one thing um, to, to think about, you know, if you're getting it, you want to look at what a quality surge protector looks like. You want something with, you know, decently thick plastic with a decent lip so that 
the blast uh, doesn't make its way out of the casing, because if you just had two things butted up against each other, you, the blast would come out, and that could potentially be dangerous. Um, but I suspect this was probably continued to be used for probably a while after uh, after this this event. Um, whether the the owners knew about it or not, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's something to think about. And just sort of talking about uh, sort of these things in general, um, surge protectors are not, uh, they're not like forever devices. They, they don't last forever because um, the protection element uh, that's used in uh, surge protectors is usually the MOV or the metal oxide varistor. Here's one out of a uh, dead APC UPS, which I, uh, I always salvage these out of, uh, you know, power electronics and stuff. And these ones are nice and big. So if you actually take a look at the size difference, um, it's a much, much bigger uh, MOV. And these, um, the sort of the simple explanation, which is uh, not technically correct, but it's, uh, it's good enough, is you can think of these like a, essentially a bunch of miniature back-to-back -back diodes. Um, so that's what the, the material inside, that, that disc that's in here, you can see there's an electron, electrode on either side, that disc basically is like a bunch of little back-to-back -back diodes. And because they're back-to-back, -back, um, no current flows in either direction. So you can put AC across this and nothing flows through it. Um, of course, there's no perfect diode, so there's a tiny amount of leakage current, but it's so small that it's basically insignificant. And every diode has a breakdown voltage where, you know, if you put too much voltage across it, it will conduct anyway. And so that's how these act as a surge suppressor when a high voltage impulse comes in, um, it, it exceeds the breakdown voltage of the disc and uh, some of those mini diodes conduct and they clamp the voltage. Um, and so that's how the protector works. Uh, it, th basically the MOV absorbs the energy um, rather than passing it to your downstream connected devices. But when that happens, um, some of those mini diodes, uh, they, they fail as a result of that, they short out. And that's okay because there's a lot of them, but the, because, uh, because some of them have shorted out, the, the leakage current through the MOV increases because it's now slightly damaged. And every successive uh, spike that it suppresses further damages the MOV and the, uh, the sort of uh, leakage current increases. And because the leakage current, um, you know, it's real current and there's a voltage across it, that means there's real power being dissipated. So the actual MOV gets hot um, as the leakage current increases. And eventually the MOV becomes uh, dangerously hot. Uh, you know, it's dissipating too much power for the package size, at which point you have to uh, disconnect the MOV from the circuit, um, or otherwise it becomes a danger in and of itself. Now, in modern uh, surge protectors, um, the way that the UL standards work is you have to put a, a thermal fuse um, that's like taped to the side of the MOV, or, or, or in, in some cases multiple MOVs, um, and the idea is when they get too hot, the thermal fuse takes the MOV out of circuit. So the power strip continues to work, but there's no more protection. And that's why sometimes you'll see lights on them, little LEDs that say that the protection is active. That LED is just in series with the MOV, so when that fuse blows, the light goes out and you know that the protection isn't active anymore. And uh, the way that you get more protection is by adding more MOVs in, in uh, parallel uh, to absorb more energy. And uh, generally you want MOVs between uh, all three possible combinations of the uh, of the, uh, the terminal. So you're gonna have one between line and neutral, one between uh, line and ground, and one between neutral and ground. Um, this one, because this is from the 80s, it's a little bit different. So you'll notice that there is no thermal fuse here. Um, there's no thermal fuse in this. It's just a MOV directly between line and neutral. This doesn't have any protection between um, the ground and any of the other conductors, and there's no thermal fuse. So the reason why the circuit breaker is here is because the circuit breaker used to be considered an acceptable way of handling MOV failure. That's not the case anymore, as far as I'm uh, as, as far as I'm aware. Um, the UL standards have have changed, um, but basically the MOV would have to get so hot that it would essentially melt and short um, before the fuse would pop, and that is what would take this out. So it's not terribly great the way that this is done. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that it's super dangerous, 
but it's definitely not as good as the modern stuff that is, uh, you know, thermally fused. So, um, as far as this thing goes, uh, I am going to fix it because I have it. I could just cut out the protection. I don't really need it um, because I usually use power taps connected to UPSs and things anyway, just, just so I can plug more stuff in. Um, so I don't, I don't actually need the protection, but I thought I might as well because I have a couple of these mobs. I might as well, um, I might as well throw them in. Of course, these are nice and big, so I'll be sort of upgrading this in the process. And I have three of them because the UPS course had one between each, so I might as well do one between each. And uh, I will be putting a thermal fuse because I have to have a thermal fuse from another project, so I will just uh, sandwich that in between all three of them and put some Kapton tape around it, and uh, that'll be good enough for that. Uh, and it'll it'll make it you know all nice and safe and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I guess other things I can mention. Uh, ch ch chances are, if you have a decent power supply. Um, or like mains power supply, there's probably mobs in it. Um, there's usually some amount of, of input protection on those, uh, on just, just good quality power supplies. Um, they're usually nowhere near this big though, uh, and they're basically designed to handle very short transients um, that are on the, the mains. They're not designed to handle gross overlay, overloads from things like lightning. Um, they're for, for more like, you know, uh, electrical noise and impulses and stuff. Um, and, uh, the big ones are, are more sort of for the external devices to, uh, like UPSs and, and stuff, to, to block pretty much lightning is, is pretty much uh, the, the, the main source of, uh, of, of surges like this. And so that's where you see the, the big stuff. And uh, they, they do fail uh, over time. So, you know, if you have a really old power bar, um, especially if you have a power bar and it's warm, um, I've actually seen some where you actually grab them, you know, around this area, and they're, they're hot. And it's not from the neon light inside them. They're just hot. And I, I can tell that the mobs are about to go. So if you have something like that, um, you can open it up and you can replace the mobs. Mobs are easy to get. Um, you can look them up on DigiKey or any of those part suppliers. Um, or just get them, like I do, out of uh, you know old uh, donor PCBs and uh, put them in. And basically, any, any mob that you'll find uh, on a mains rated device, you can pretty much just put it on another mains rated device. Um, it's it's not rocket science um, for rating of these things. They're, they're, it's not super critical. Uh, the way that the the way that mobs generally work is the uh, the amount of the, basically the size of the mob and the the energy it can dissipate uh, goes up with a function of the clamping voltage. So mobs that can handle more um, more pulse energy. Um, which would be measured in joules, they clamp at a higher voltage and are therefore worse as uh, a surge protector, if, if that sort of makes any sense. So this, this tiny mob here, um, it's actually kind of medium size. this medium-sized mob would uh, clamp, it would trip at a lower voltage than these ones do. And uh, bigger ones than this will trip at an even higher voltage. And of course, you want it to trip as low a voltage as possible, um, because that's of course the voltage that the clamping voltage is what's going to actually appear uh, to the devices when, when during the surge. Assuming this doesn't blow up. Um, obviously, if it blows up like this, then um, it's just not doing anything anymore. It's open circuit. Um, but that's why um, you, you want to. You don't want to just get the biggest mob you can. You want to try and get a a low, um, a low. It's, it's it's a compromise. You want a, a low enough cl uh, clamping voltage, but also enough energy that they don't just blow up and become useless. Um, a lot of surge protectors will have a bunch of mobs in them, the ones that are rated for you know thousands of joules, uh, and they'll usually be a combination of small ones and big ones, um, specifically for that reason. However, uh, and and this is not something I am uh, a great expert in, but I'd love maybe maybe there's someone out there who can shed some light on this. Um, I kind of get the feeling that some of the manufacturers of uh, these power strips are kind of uh, they're kind of lying uh, on their marketing with the uh, the surge protection rating. Um, so the on on like a, a lot of surge protectors, you'll see in the marketing it'll say you know um, so many so many joules, you know four hundred joules, eighteen hundred joules, four thousand joules, uh, and that's the surge energy. And that, that makes sense because um, that's what these are rated for. But uh, the numbers don't seem to make much sense to me. 
because um, there's, for example, there's one of these that's, um, that's like, a, like an Amazon Basics brand. Uh, it's rated for like 4,000 something joules. You take it apart, it's got 10 mobs in it. Um, they're the same brand as these, they're, they're Borns. You can look at the data sheet. And if you add up the, the energy from the manufacturer of the mobs um, for all 10 of them, you get like 1,200 joules. It's not even, it's not even close to what the, what it's rated for. And so that, so they're basically, they're, they're overrating them um, compared to what the manufacturer or the component says, which seems completely wrong to me. And then you can't just, the, the other thing is, you can't just add the numbers together because of those mobs, you're going to have them divided into three separate, uh, three separate pairs, right? You're going to have um, some across line and neutral, some across line and ground, some across neutral and ground. So, you know, if we just divide that 1,200 by 3, that's 400 joules per, per uh, pair. And if you get a surge on, you know, let's say line and neutral, yeah, some of that energy is going to go um, between ground because neutral and ground are tied together, but not all of it. So uh, it's not going to be equally shared, so you can't just add them up. And I feel like this is just marketing is just uh, going with, you know, the cardinal rule of uh, put the biggest number on the box. It doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, and I don't think there is any, like, standard way of testing. Um, like, I don't think that those, those ratings are, adhe they don't adhere to any standard. I think the manufacturer is just free to put that on their box. And, uh, like, obviously, as far as the UL standards and stuff go, that, of course, all has to be certified. But those are safety standards. Those have nothing to do with the amount of surge they can withstand. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I think uh, a lot of those probably don't meet their rating because this, by the way, so so this this particular unit, which is by Borns, and it is a 20D361K. Um, this one is rated for 163 joules, and so um, you know if you had three of these, then you know you've got like somewhere around 400 joules of surge protection, um, which, you know, for the entire device, um, which n would never get used uh, simultaneously. So I, I just, I don't know. It seems like, like you got to think about how, mu how many of these would you need to actually get 4,000 joules. Uh, I've never seen a, I've never seen a device that has anywhere even, even close to enough space to fit this. And also these are like, these are like, uh, I don't know this particular one, but um, we're talking like like, like a dollar, a couple dollars per mob. They're not cheap um, for the the high energy ones. So, yeah, it uh, seems a bit weird. But anyway, I'm I'm just waffling about random power bar stuff. Anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get the soldering iron out, put this in there, put the thermal fuse in, put this all back together again. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes you you lose at the thrift store, right? Um, but anyway, it's just a couple dollars. But anyway, I thought this was kind of—I thought this was kind of cool to see uh, see it blo blown up like this. Um, I wish I—I I wish the footage was usable when I opened this for the first time, because that was pretty—that uh, was pretty interesting. Because it, it obviously was a little bit worse than this. Some of these were actually um, some of these pieces were actually embedded in the plastic. Um, they had basically been ejected with so much force they'd gotten stuck. So they, uh, it was a pretty forceful explosion. Um, I think the, the switch seems to be perfectly fine. The breaker is something that I can easily test. I don't, I don't suspect there's been any damage to these components. Uh, the breaker is really not necessary. If the breaker doesn't work, I really don't care. Um, the switch is all that matters, and that works fine. So, um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about uh, surge protection and uh, why, you should, uh, why you should have surge protection, and uh, maybe you should probably check some of your devices that have uh, mobs in them and take a look at what's in there. Maybe um, think about refreshing them every, you know, every decade or so. Um, you know, just take the mobs out, put some new ones in, and uh, your protection's renewed again. So, yeah. Until next time, thanks for watching.